Today on Pots and Trials, we're looking at a garden in North Yorkshire that's going to give you lots of ideas and inspiration. And that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden and Dalak. Welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, today I've come to visit a garden of some friends in North Yorkshire, Les and Jill, who have created an amazing garden that has changed and evolved over the years and uses every available square foot of the garden. And here's Jill out uh, in the garden doing a little bit of work. Hello, Jill, what are you Hello, doing? Martin. I'm just deadheaded microcosmias. I always... just want to um, make it look a little bit tidy. Yeah, always a job to do, isn't it? Always, yes. always. And Obviously, the monadas are to do next. Now the bees have finished with them. Yeah. Um, hopefully, they'll blossom out again. Right. We've Looking... had a couple of flushes, but uh, yes. we might get another one. Oh, you might do, it. especially if it's cooling down a bit and we get a bit of rain, more yes. than likely. The garden is looking fantastic. Thank it you really much. is, because it's not the biggest of gardens. It's, it's long that way, but it doesn't go far from the house, does it? No, and it's quite an odd shaped pot because it's not a perfect triangle or a rectangle or a square. So finding things to do with it was not obvious because when mm. you looked in all the books and looked for ideas, um, there wasn't anything there for the shape it was. Mm. So it was about finding something that we liked really above all other things. Yeah. And I'm a curvy girl. Um, I like curves. Well, so. uh, and the thing is, you have designed this garden because I've known this garden for a long time now and you're always reinventing it and you've done everything in this garden. You and Les have designed it and all the construction and everything, haven't you? We have. And uh, I certainly couldn't do without the man who does. No. Because he helps me sort things out. If He's got a very engineering brain. So if I want something and I don't know how to do it, he's really good he does. at helping me find a way around absolutely it. can we have a little wander around we can. Then? We good can. so it's sort of divided into sections isn't it and yes. and this is a, a new bit that you've done obviously there's some established trees like this amazing crab apple tree here and archways and things but they, this path is all new isn't it what what because yes. i remember this as being a lawn well we changed it because as a lawn it didn't work mm. um it created a muddy path in the winter yeah um which meant that every time you went backwards and forwards you ended up with bare bits of grass right and this is my hotter part of the garden so lots of sunshine or well, most of the day and i love bright colors so i wanted a bed that was allowed to be yellows and oranges and reds and the odd purple and yeah. something a bit crazy um and this reflects that really nicely it gives it a bit more of a mediterranean feel it's worked really well because it's like a steel edging isn't it yes and then um hogging i suppose you call it yeah, or breeding we, gravel we put down a crush and run 20 centimeter down and then we used the what they call the um self-binding gravel that mm -hmm. they use in some of the national trust places yeah. and such and it's just created this lovely mediterranean fill pathway that is so serviceable and when it rains it just cleans it yeah it's self-cleaning i love it's it it's fabulous. great it's and, really nice. and this creates sort of a third of the garden because where jill is walking backwards I hope she doesn't fall into that pond by the way <laughs> to enter this bit you come through this wonderful arch which has got a golden hop going up this side and clematis there so that is one section which is just amazing which i'll come back to later so then if we go into this bit it just opens up we've got a lovely greenhouse here every bit of this garden has been used no, nothing is wasted so we've got a lovely greenhouse which is very practical you do a lot of propagation don't you yes i do I, I, and i love to grow things like tomatoes and strawberries and things like that and here in north yorkshire the weather's so unpredictable mm -hmm. that i now this year i grew my strawberries inside there door open so that it got it wasn't too hot but it just gave the protection from yeah. the wind and the rain and then i decided that wasn't big enough so in a very small part of the garden i put a long narrow I've just walked past it, haven't I? As I Greenhouse. walked in, you've got a, on the wall there, so and you've got there, more space. The tomatoes grow beautifully in there yeah. because it gets sun. It's in the sunny south side of the garden, yeah. but it's a very narrow path that really just had hedges either side. Right. Uh, just to introduce you into the garden. So it was very boring and really didn't do much. So that's beautiful. Okay, right. Shall we have a wander on and have a look at a bit more? Okay. So we've got a little patio area here, which is just as you want it. As you come yes. out, they... As you come out the house, they've got a lovely mature magnolia there. Um, and, you know, we've sat here with before and had drinks and it's just a wonderful place to sit, isn't it? It is. This? And when we did, we 
improved the house when we bought it back and um, I wanted desperately to be in the garden so that I could look out the window and feel I was here. Mm -hmm. Even if the weather's not good in the middle of winter, I like to try and make sure there's something to see, something mm. to do. And this was a natural area to have a dining table. In. Yeah. Because so many houses now are built with such small gardens, but even this section here provides you with an additional room and plants, and it makes you feel quite cosseted and uh, in the evenings it's lovely yeah i mean you are you're very good with your plants jill because you you've got a, a mixture of you know trees and shrubs and perennials and you've very cleverly woven them together so that even in the middle of the winter you've got something here haven't you i mean yes. that you've got the the lovely fats here there with those bold leaves quite tropical looking and you know evergreens like the euonymus so i just think you have the plantsmanship in this garden is amazing it Thank really you. is um and and at whatever time of the year you come there is something of interest and this is a real sunspot of course isn't it to it sit is. out but then as the sun goes around you get a little bit of shade off the magnolia so it's lovely because we we're not particularly hot sun people mm. so having the magnolia and obviously a brolly or whatever yeah. it just is a lovely space to come out and have breakfast lunch yeah whatever exactly it's fabulous water features play an important part i know we've walked by one made out of an old milk churn haven't you but there's another one i'm heading to as well that that is les isn't it that the, is the, this is les this is the engineer at yeah. work uh, a friend gave us the churn we decided that we had to have it in the garden because agriculture is in the back of leslie's mm. life so it was nice to have something that sort of harpers back to those days yeah. and to make it functional again. Right, excellent. So, and it's yes. lovely. Yeah. And it's down on the ground, so hedgehogs and things will come to it and drink and right. so forth. And wasps sit on the top of it, you know, and have a, have a drink. So it's really nice. We'll go and have a, another look at the, uh, the other one then. This one's still in development. This one is feeding troughs yeah. that we bought at a local fair. And um, the idea is it will provide me with somewhere, eventually, the whole bed really will need a little bit of jigging, somewhere to grow plants that grow in water, mm. rather than having a deep pond, which we would both find quite difficult to get down and, and work with. Yeah. It was about bringing things up to a level that would make it easier for us in the yeah. long term. So I'm going down to Lincolnshire to buy the plants to go in mm. and it's going to work really well because there's quite a bit of depth with that isn't it so they'll yeah, they'll look great it's, it's decent and at the bottom we've got the stone for the birds right yes yeah and then you can get in and out and you've just got that lovely trickle of water haven't you it's good and with the greenery around amazing yeah. and all the insects there's just loads oh, when i came the other day every flower had five flies on it mm. Well, that one will be perfect for Les when he wants to soak his feet, won't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Whip his shoes off, feet in there, it'd be perfect. We just need to bring the bench a bit yeah, nearer so exactly, you can yeah. do that Dip quite comfortably. And, you know, you've got this lovely old barn wall there that you've yeah. made a feature of, and I suppose that gets quite a lot of warmth because this plant you've got grown against it. The last time I saw this, and you, you are an Essex girl, aren't you? I am. Originally. I saw this grown at Essex a few weeks ago at Hyde Hall. It's a purplurium, isn't it? Yes, Fruity it's like a, yeah, an evergreen honeysuckle. Yeah. And this is as much flower as you will get from it. Yeah. So it's not a traditional honeysuckle flower. It has been covered in insects all summer which has saved it a bit really mm. because it, it does tend to do what it wants to do yeah the one in hillier gardens down in um hampshire that i looked at the other week looked beautiful because it was in a beautifully right. domed shape but i don't think i'll be able to achieve that and it obviously try. survives though the north yorkshire winters okay because it's quite sheltered and protected and it's, just here because it's evergreen it provides shelter and and greenery all year yeah. round so it's a nice backdrop and things like agapanthus are thriving here yes. you've got some amazing agapanthus so it gives it that almost semi subtropical but you've still got then traditional plants around um, and then another area just here i suppose there's almost like a fourth area where you've got this wonderful mature conifer that's probably been here since the the bungalow was built i suspect it has i bought it for 50p planted in a coffee cup yeah. So it's in a little plastic coffee cup for 50p, and I can honestly say I've grown it from that height. Yeah. Um, and it creates the garden. It, it, it's a real key feature. So quite what happens when it's no longer here? I, I think it's I don't know. amazing. And I know the foliage features quite heavily in village Christmas wreaths anyway. Yes. But <laughs> it's just created this lovely area. Because again, yeah. like you say, you and Les don't like it too hot. It's a nice shady area, isn't it? That you can come and sit here, sit underneath it. 
um, and just be in the shade but listen to the water run in and just take in the garden. Yes, and it also just pretties up the area where you want functional things like sheds. Yeah, exactly. Um, and a little compound where we keep wheelbarrows and yeah. fertiliser and stuff. Mm. So it's just it just works really well. It does, doesn't it? So you've got really four areas of the garden stretching that way and you can sort of feel like you're in four different areas. And even really little areas down there, you know, you've got things that, you know, like Les has made log stores because you've yes. the things that you need and his really clever way of disguising all your water, water butts. butts. He's made them all himself. They're not bought, are they? He's no, just he's done and made those it. just out of rough hewn timber so yeah. that it's not planed and that gives it a nice rugged feel, which is the right yeah. thing for us. Um, so knowing you, you'll be changing an area soon, which, which is, is a, or are you happy with it now? Um, is this you know, I am nearly there. Yeah. I, I'm nearly there for now. I will always say for now because Leslie says my plants are dizzy because they get moved. Um, but the hot garden, I just want to create at the back of the hot garden, I have raspberries and blackberries up against the house wall because they're the fruits I really want to grow. Mm -hmm. But I don't autumn raspberries i think are lovely because they're just out of traditional yeah. season and yeah. obviously it's nice to have so i just want to create an area across the back of there where i can just contain those mm -hmm. so that i can um just finish off that bed and then bring it from a high level down to the front and just rearrange some of the plants do a little better planting under the crab tree mm. uh, and maybe just restrict the crab tree a little all yeah. the water shoots and things at right. the moment yeah. want taking um, down taking down yeah so um that's probably the next big yeah thing. so more tweaks and adjustments yes. you've done the major construction but the shapes now i'm happy with. i think it's amazing because it takes you on a path through the garden you can come in one end go through four gardens and then out the other side it, it works really really well um and like you say plants you can tweak and move around and then you can enjoy it can't you yeah absolutely yeah absolutely and we do now yeah that's you know, what the hard work is over because we started with the soil mm. and i think that's been the key to the success mm -hmm. is making the soil right before we started yeah. planting well i think it's amazing it really is having seen known the garden for years and i know you've been tweaking it and changing it and i, I think you've got it spot on it really is lovely much. so look forward to coming back and seeing it in, in a few years time and and making sure you've not More dug, than welcome. dug all this up i'll get the bottle in the fridge ready <laughs> thank you jill <laughs> thank you Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trials and I hope you've enjoyed this tour of Les and Jill's garden where every square inch is put to good use. Next time I'm going to be answering some of your gardening questions, so we'll see you then. Bye.